My name is Chris Mutel, and I'm going to introduce you to Brightway 2, a new open source framework for advanced lifecycle assessment. The first thing we need to do is set up the environment. So I'm going to make a virtual environment on my computer. That means I haven't installed any of the software ahead of time. And just to show you how easy it is to install Brightway. Uh, I'm going to use some of the things, the numerical libraries, which take some time to compute. But now I'm just going to go download and install all of the Brightway code. It's as simple as typing pip install Brightway 2. PIP is just a package manager for Python code. Now my computer is downloading all of the uh, requirements that are needed, both the Brightway 2 packages and its dependencies. This shouldn't take that long. Of course, it depends on the speed of your internet connection uh, and whether or not your network is working all that well. Hopefully things will be fine this afternoon. The ETH network is having some problems this morning. So you can see we've started to download a few things. Here's Brightway 2 UI. Here's Brightway 2 Analyzer. The different packages in Brightway 2 are split up so that people can work on things that are more interesting to them, or uh, they can work on packages where they feel they have special expertise. For example, some people are better at web design, some people are better at dealing with matrices and linear algebra, other people are more comfortable doing maybe data manipulation. And it looks like we're almost done. Everything's getting installed. And as soon as I get the OK, I'm going to type in Brightway 2 web. Uh, and it's going to start a new tab in my browser. All right, so Brightway 2 tries to be as friendly as possible. It says hi, for example, and it looks like I'm starting Brightway 2 for the first time. So one of the first things you have to do in Brightway 2 is to set up a data directory. I'm going to put mine in my uh, user home directory. I'm going to call it Brightway 2. Great, OK, and um, now I'm going to import basic metadata. So the basic metadata, that's the database of biosphere flows, and it's also the set of impact assessment methods, which are normally included along with EcoInvent. Um, this takes uh, a little bit of time, just because it's downloading something like over 650 impact assessment methods, and it has to process these as well. But it looks like everything is set up and ready to go. So. Here are uh, here's my database. So I have biospheres, uh, about 4,000 of those activities, and I can page through and see here are all the impact assessment methods that I have, uh, more or less everything you would need. And of course, you can update those, or um, we will provide updates for you as new methods are developed. Okay, so uh, we want to import a database, and we can do that now. So I'm going to import EcoInvent, so I know exactly where it is. EcoInvent processes. Here's all my different processes. Looks like there's about 4,000 of them. I'm going to call this EcoInvent 2.2, because that's what it is. EcoInvent 2.2. And if I look in my uh, terminal window, I can see that I'm extracting the data. And then the um, import script is going to link that data. It's going to, it, do, it won't allow you to make links to processes and other databases which don't exist. So it takes a little while just to verify that the uh, data has uh, good quality and, and every, that there aren't any missing links. Otherwise, you would get errors in your calculations later on. So stuff like this takes a little while, but it's relatively easy to do, I hope. And it's all controlled through the web. OK, so it's going to redirect me as fast as soon as it can to the home page. There we go. I have EcoInvent 2.2 and my Biosphere, uh, 4,000 activities in EcoInvent. And before I do an LCA calculation, I just want to turn on some optional stuff. So one thing is uh, Brightway 2 has the ability to do report uploading. So when I do a calculation, an LCA calculation, uh, that data is going to be saved to a disk. And I can also upload that data to a server. Now, this is turned off by default, but if you want to, you can upload your calculations to report.brightwaylca.org. And um, then you will get a secret link back. And you can share that secret link with whoever you want to. Um, it's secret in the sense that it has a, a long series of random letters and numbers at the end. Uh, of course, you don't have to do that, or you can install your own report server if that's going to work better for you. And I'm going to change the default number of Monte Carlo iterations to just 1,000 so that we get some uh, results a little bit quicker and the video can get done a little bit faster. Great. So uh, I changed my settings, I imported everything, and now I think I can do an LCA calculation. Now I'm just going to pick some activities. First, I want to choose from EcoInvent 2.2. Of course, if I had some other projects of my own, you'd see a list of whatever would be imported on your machine at the time. Um, let's choose maybe a brick. Here's a brick. Maybe some glass. Here's some packaging glass. Maybe some steel. I don't know. I'm just making this up as I go along. Great. 
one meter. Uh, now, uh, right way two is software that's still in development. One thing that would be nice is to be able to actually change the amounts. Hopefully that's going to come relatively soon. Um, you'd also like to be able to delete things and whatnot, but uh, okay, we can still do some calculations. So here's my composite functional unit. It's two kilograms in one meter, and we'll look at the global warming potential. All right, so global warming potential, I have my units, I'm ready to go, I can click calculate, and the calculation has been started. Now I'm just going to show you uh, over here that this is now using the entire CPU of my laptop. So on my laptop I have uh, eight virtual cores, and I've dispatched different workers to take up all of those cores so that I'm using as much of the CPU as I can so that the Monte Carlo iterations are done as fast as possible. In Brightway 2, when you do an LCA report, you always do uncertainty analysis. There's no option not to. Okay, great. Now here is my web report. So you can see here's my functional unit, the rather strange one I chose. I have my impact assessment method. I have a score, a median, average, and I have the 95% density interval. It's not a confidence interval because it's empirical results. Uh, here I have a histogram and I have a smoothed, um, not exactly a PDF function, but a, uh, a smoothed histogram. That's the green bar, and I have my 95% and 95% lower and upper intervals. Okay, so Brightway 2 comes with a bunch of different graphics. The graphics are all built using the D3 uh, JavaScript library. That's data-driven documents, and it's really an amazing piece of work. It allows you to build lots and lots of different visualizations, and I'm going to show you just the ones that are built into Brightway 2 for now. The first is a tree map. Okay, in this case the tree map is not all that helpful. We maybe should have chosen a better functional unit, but that's okay. Uh, if there were more pack processes which are important, then you would see a number of different colors here, and the size of the different rectangles correspond to their relative impact, where 100% of the, the impact um, is 100% of the space in this graphic. The next is a force directed graph, and here we see something that's maybe a little bit better. I guess that this green thing is our functional unit. Yep, this darker green thing here is the packaging glass, and actually this is a dynamic visualization, so I can drag this around. Uh, maybe I can move this one over here, it'll fit a little bit better over here, and the colors correspond to the categories. So this is going to be, blue is going to be steel in this case, uh, the uh, orange is going to be electricity. Here I have some brick, and then brick, okay, so there's natural gas going down here. Uh, uh, I can move from a view of the cumulative impacts to the individual wakes, and the circles will shrink or grow depending on uh, what's appropriate for their individual processes. And here you can see that actually, the even though there's a lot of cumulative impact going up the supply chain, the impact of each of these steps is rather small. So each of these circles is at the minimum size. Um, there's one more graphic um, and a set of indices, and these corresponds to uh, how much of the impact is being driven just by a few emissions or by a few uh, activities. Uh, here we have the top five activities, here we have the top five biosphere flows, that's emissions or resource consumption, and you can see that uh, a lot of the impact is being driven by this packaging glass and the, the one carbon dioxide emission that it has. Of course you'll see multiple carbon dioxides here, that's because they have different categories. One could be emission to unknown, one could be emission to uh, air in high population density, and one could be emission to air in low population density, something like that. Um, and the size of these rectangles, well, if you added up all the sizes of these different squares, then you would get the size of this one bigger square. Okay, so uh, this is a graphic which I think has a lot of potential. Um, and it, you get a similar sense from looking at these two different indices. We have the concentration index and the Herfindel index, and they're both two different ways. You can click on them uh, and read about them in Wikipedia of saying how much of your impact is being driven by these few most important processes. And in general, it's important to understand that because it tells you how dependent you are on the data quality just of a few individual data sets. The higher you, the, you have your concentration index, the more your I mean, impact is being driven by just a few processes, then the more reliant you are on the data quality of those processes and the less robust overall your uh, results are going to be because depending on whether or not those numbers are really representative of what you're looking at, you could be coming up with numbers which are not really all that accurate for your specific case. Okay, now uh, Brightway 2 is open source and hopefully we'll have people contributing to it. And as part of that, um, 
I've put all these different visualizations up on the web using a really nice service called tributary.io. So in each case, we have online uh, visualizations where you can go in and change different things. So um, one thing I can change is if I just add a space, it's going to redraw the map each time. So every time I make any small change, I can see the effect immediately. And I can go in and change in these different parameters. Like here, I have this charge parameter. And when I change that charge parameter, then the circles, uh, the relative uh, way that circles are attracted to each other changes. And if I make it really big, the circles get really close. If I make it really small, the circles get far away from each other. Similarly, I can change this gravity parameter. Uh, if I make it negative, then it gets pushed off the screen. If I make it really high, then the uh, circles again get pulled back to each other. So you're welcome to go in and make some changes and then let me or other developers of Brightway 2 know about that so that we can improve the graphics for everyone. And in fact, there is a web page called Contributing to Brightway that's in the Brightway 2 documentation that explains how even if you don't know Python or other programming languages, uh, if you only know about web development, JavaScript or CSS or HTML, then you can go and find the links to these four different visualizations which are in the LCA report and you have a bunch of different ideas, um, things which have already been done in, in D3 but haven't been ported to the uh, data of Brightway 2. Um, for database visualization, supply chain visualization, and other results visualization. Okay, so this is in the official Brightway 2 documentation, and you can find a link to that on the home page uh, relatively simply. Great, so let's go back to the report. There's one other thing I want to show you, which is that this report data was automatically uploaded to the reports.brightwaylca.org site, uh, and that's here. So it's the same uh, values and in the same visualization, again, this is a, a live report, so I can play with the things which allow some interaction. Um, and I could just copy this link and send it to somebody else if this is something I wanted to communicate to people. Great. Um, the actual report format is uh, is in JavaScript, so this is something where you could also do an assessment in Brightway 2 and then give that data to another uh, program or another programming language, uh, even just to another completely different web page, and it could interpret those results uh, relatively simple because the data format is very portable. Okay, uh, there's another way to interact with Brightway 2, and that is through the Brightway 2 controller. So if I kill off the web server and I type in Brightway 2 controller and ask it for a little bit of help, it'll tell me here are all the different ways that you can do. So this is a command line utility. I can, for example, list all the databases. So there aren't that many right now, just Biosphere and Ecovent 2. Uh, and I could do something like, say, give me details. Maybe details on Ecoinvent 2.2. .2. There I go. So I have some of the different metadata. Uh, this isn't um, necessarily so easy to understand right at the beginning, but there's uh, extensive documentation on all the different data formats and how you can interact with the different data formats. Okay, I also have the ability to back up back up data, to copy data, to look at the different versions that are available, to do some validation on the data. Uh, there's a whole lot of different possibilities. And there's the one last and the most powerful way of interacting with Brightway 2, uh, and that is through the use of an IPython notebook. Now, I'm going to open a new terminal. I'm going to work in my virtual environment, and I'm going to say IPython notebook, and then I want to have some inline graphics. So I type pylab equals inline. And this is going to open another web browser terminal. And in this case, I am being, going to be able to both type in text. So this is just text. I can go in here and say, hi, demo. And that will show up. I also have computer code. And I can run the computer code like this. There we go. You can see that it's it's responding stuff. I can also uh, run all the different cells. So let's run all the computer code that's located here. And actually, everything was done except for this serialized LCA report, which is uh, taking a little longer to do because it needs to load the data to do that. Great. Uh, so here I've just produced a brand new report. I can open that up in a new web browser. There we go. The results here aren't so interesting. The point is that uh, the IPython notebook is, a, is an online scientific notebook so that you can write code, you can write documentation, you can explain what you did, why you did it. You can include things like here I have just a graphic. This is just a, uh, an image. 
Uh, you can also include uh, interactive visualizations. You can uh, interact, for example, with R or other types of computer programs where uh, Python has a bridge to them. And um, I think it would be really amazing to be able to look at a scientific paper, an LCA paper, for example, and then be able to go back, see the calculations that they made, and even go in and change them. I can go in here, change any of these uh, little cells change the actual Python code and see what uh, impact it has on the overall results. And you can do some pretty interesting things. So for example, if I go and look at a different one, a little more advanced one, here's a notebook where I did some calculations looking at 50 different impact assessment methods and all the processes in EcoInvent, trying to look at the correlations in different impact assessment scores. And when I made a graph, that graph is embedded directly into the notebook itself. Um, and you can see that for some different impact assessment methods, there are some really interesting correlations or uh, differing correlations. Now, I'm not going to go into the details here. This is linked from the homepage as well. And if you're not uh, viewing this video on the homepage, then there'll be links in the comments explaining how to get there. The point is that you can do really powerful calculations, but in a way which is really easy uh, and convenient to communicate to others. And that is the IPython notebook. Of course, you can also just open up a terminal window uh, for example, I can type in IPython here and say from Brightway to Brightway 2, import everything, and I would have access to, I don't know, all the databases, for example. Okay, these are two different databases that were created by the, the notebook just a little while ago. Great. So, uh, that is a brief introduction to Brightway 2 uh, and a brief introduction to the uh, hopefully the software ecosystem that will be built up around this tool, which is both a tool which has uh, a lot already done, but I think it's much more exciting because it has a lot of potential in um, changing the way we do advanced LCA assessments and also giving you the possibility to do uh, meta assessments on lots of different data sets or lots of different methods at once. Uh, thank you for your attention, and I hope you enjoy playing with and hopefully developing the tool in the future.